Get ready for a cloud-first workplace. Jumpstart your career by signing up for a Google Cloud hands-on learning experience. Companies around the world are moving to the cloud. This is a unique opportunity to gain new skills and professional credentials. If you want to discover a career, scale your startup, or perform groundbreaking research that will change the world, this is the event for you. Good evening, everyone. Rohan, how are you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited today. Yeah. So uh, for those who are listening, um, we're moving from the introductory level to more a little bit more advanced, correct, Rohan? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I'm pretty excited for that. And what are we building today? Oh, this is pretty exciting. So today, we're going to build our first our first uh, intermediate app, which is a dog quotes app. So uh, there are about 256 dog breeds you know, that are officially recognized. And each dog has a quote, a life quote that they want to share with us. So we're going to uh, listen to all those dogs. Awesome. So before we kick things off, I want to quickly walk you everybody through our Discord server. Um, so if you look at the description below on YouTube, you can find that um, uh, we have set up a Discord server. Uh, very quickly, once you join, you will only get to see the rules on the welcome page. Um, we can go through. I have a walkthrough video here. Uh, right now, if you don't have time, that's fine. And then on the rules section, you just click here and check in, agreeing to all the rules because we want to make sure you all are uh, um, all nice to each other. And all, there, there's a few uh, items that we listed out. Um, when you get a chance, give it a read. And all these other channels will unlock. Um, so today, we're going to be using um, Dalton is already there on the QL Lobby 1. This is just in case if we get stuck. Uh, and then you can type in any other questions and at mention Rohan or any tutors that are volunteering uh, and they might be able to jump in and help you out. Uh, and if you still can't figure out things, you're welcome to jump into one of the lobbies where one of our tutors is live and then you can share the screen and ask him a question and then hopefully things will get uh, sorted out. Now, uh, Rohan, um, you are going to be doing some office hours. Do you want to share some of that and how that process is going to take place? Uh, absolutely. So um, uh, Dalton, he's, he's amazing and he's doing some office hours. He did some yesterday and even today before the session started. I'm going to do some tomorrow. Uh, so from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern, Eastern time. Um, so, so basically, uh, also, I, I will mention this in the Discord server. So. Uh, more information will be there. But yes, I'll be holding some of us tomorrow. And also, you'll see a feedback and uh, ideas channel on Discord. Let us know what you want to see, how we can make that experience better. Um, I know uh, Danny is going to, Danny and me, we're going to be working on and adding a few things to it to make it more entertaining and not just about tech. We want to make it fun and interactive for you all. Uh, so that being said, over to you, Rohan. Uh, take it away. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Malisha. So today, uh, I, I can't tell you how, how I've, I've been waiting for this day for a long time. Finally come to the intermediate level where we get to use some really cool Flutter widgets. So not just the basic ones, some really advanced ones uh, that are so easy to use. Uh, so we're going to uh, take a sneak peek on, on those widgets and uh, build some cool Flutter apps. So today we're going to start with a dog quotes app. So uh, before this, as Madhusha said, uh, please join the Discord. Uh, so that way you can ask questions on Discord uh, and the, the Flutter uh, channel. And also add the rate and tag me. Uh, that way, after we complete every step of our app, I will check for any questions. And if anyone has tagged me, I will answer them live uh, during the session. Also, Dalton, who is amazing and helping So Rohan, I had to do it because I know you always freeze. So I'm gonna uh, throw that frozen every time you freeze. 
Yeah. Till you, get, till you get your internet connection fixed. Okay, sorry, you stay. But back no, to no, no, no. This, this is. I was uh, pretty surprised to see that. That's, that's amazing. Thank you, Vadish. Yeah. Uh, so yes, I freeze a couple of times. There's a bit of a network connectivity issue, and uh, hopefully, I'll get it solved at some point. Uh, yes, but as I was saying, on Discord, if you want some help uh, from me, just uh, just tag me uh, in the Flutter channel. Uh, you know, add the rate and then my name. Uh, that way, I will see if the, if anyone has tagged me after I complete every step of the app. And then I will answer your questions live. Also, uh, Dalton, who's amazing, he's going to be helping us out uh, in the Flutter uh, channel section. So he also can help you out uh, in answering some questions. So, little on the schedule. This was these were all the apps we have done. Our first three weeks of beginner level apps. We started with Hello World. You know what is Flutter, and uh, just to get introduced to what Flutter is. Then, to get introduced to the Flutter's UI, we built a favorite celebrities app that was just UI, then a love calculator. We went into what APIs are in depth. So um, we, we yes. Uh, so today we're going to go and use a more complex API and uh, build on the skills that we have studied, the UI skills that we have studied in week two, and the coding skills that we studied in week three, and finally build our dog ports app. Uh, a quick uh, talk on what we're going to do next week's. Uh, stay tuned for our currency converter app. That's going to be next week. Uh, again, these are all in the intermediate level now. So currency converter, uh, there are what's a weather app that downloads the live weather and you know, shows you a beautiful weather app. And finally, our last two sessions of a chat app and our face recognition app that uses pretty much everything, all the tools of Firebase that you would most, most likely use in your app development career. So our dog quotes app. Uh, Here's how it looks. It's a list of, of the, the uh, dog breeds. So each dog breed, if you notice, they have a quote here, uh, a quote that they want to say. When you click on, on a particular dog, it even shows you s some images of the dog, right? So you, we're going to learn on how do you build that this beautiful scroll, scrollable uh, image list uh, that does autoplay. So even if you don't scroll right, you would notice that it does autoplay. You would also notice these icons, right? These icons here that show for the height, for the weight, uh, so on and so forth. So there's a lot of fun stuff that we're going to implement today. Uh, this is just a handful of skills that we're going to learn today. So uh, without any further ado, let's begin. So our, our code is going to be on our, our GitHub page, right? As always, it's always going to be on GitHub. And our app is, is divided into seven steps. And each step is divided into starter and solution code. So as always, we are going to clone a repository from this uh, you know, fr from the in from the internet. And uh, uh, so you can just copy this this URL from here. And we'll. Uh, so if you're an Android Studio, which you know most of us are, uh, you can click File, New, Project from Version Control. So this is basically, it asks you for a URL where your Git repository is located. And you can paste that URL that you just copied. And now it will ask you, where do you want to save your uh, project? So I'm fine with this location. And I will click Clone. And now it will ask you, do you want to create an Android Studio project for it? So for that option, we'll select No. We don't want to do that. And now uh, you have cloned that repository onto your local system. So click on File. Open, oops, click on File, Open, and find where did you save that, that, uh, that app. So I saved it, C drive, users. Uh, do you know how do we, yes, uh, uh, that, that's a really good point. I will uh, talk more about that. How do we find this repository? Is there a link to the GitHub? Yep, I, I will share the link, absolutely. Uh, so it will be shared uh, on the uh, comments soon. So uh, yes, and, and also you can search by my name, you know, uh, Rohan Kargo, uh, and it should be the first repository that that's there. And also you can even click on the link. Uh, perfect. So I looks like for to add the readme, but uh, for to push that change of the readme, but all the code is there. Cool. So. Uh, yes, it's a very interactive session, so be sure to put your questions in, and I will answer them uh, 
it, with hardly any delay. So uh, it'll be featured on, on the chat and I mean on the screen and uh, I will answer them. So it's a very interactive session. So uh, don't hesitate to ask questions. Cool. So now we have cloned a repository and now you just get all these errors. Don't get scared. It's basically uh, the, the, the dependencies have to be downloaded. So just click on get dependencies and hopefully these errors should go away. And if it still stays here, uh, so that's just some Android Studio problem. It's it's uh, our code is working, at, you know, as expected. Yep, it goes away. Yep, so, so that's that's fine. And all the errors should go away from here too. Yeah, everything looks fine. So our starter code this time, uh, it it has done a few minimal things. Uh, so you can run this app right now, and. Here's our emulator. By the way, this is our finished app. So this is how it will look, right? You get this the beautiful transition. Uh, right. So this is this is how our app would look. Let's yes. And and if a dog has multiple images, uh, then we can even scroll through those images. And there's even autoplay. So if I don't click anything, you notice after every three seconds. It goes to the next image to, to build this very dynamic experience for the user. So a lot of cool widgets that we're going to use here. So uh, let's run our app on this master branch, which is which is fine. So let's give it a, a while. By the way, if there are any questions, we can uh, check those those uh, comments there. Yep. And let's give it a few more minutes for our app. Uh, to start. So, by the way, all of you too, you can uh, run it uh, on your uh, on your emulator on your physical device that you have set up. And once it's ready, we can talk about over the structure of a of a starter code, and, um, and and we'll start building step one. So let's let's uh, give it some time. Yeah, this, this part always takes quite a while. Uh, always starting an Android app in the start, it takes a while. So let's... Uh, and if you want to see the process, yeah, it should be in the run pane. And we are almost done. And... Yeah, it, it seems to be taking much longer than usual. So we seem to have got another message. So we are almost done there. And yes, as as always, if any questions, be, uh, be sure to put it in. And I should get that perfect. It's done, and now our app should uh, restart on our phone. And currently, we are in the master branch. So the master branch is a solution. So you all can play around with the solution right now, and just uh, just mess around with this, and you know, just see how the finished app would look like. Um, and then. What we're going to start. So if you notice, so be sure to click the Run uh, tab here. You should see this number go all the way up to 256. So basically, it's downloading the breed information from our online API. So uh, once it reaches 256, we should see uh, yeah, all of this loads. And this is how it will look like. You, you click on any of the dog, and it should appear here. right? So. Um, we have our app running here. Now click on this Git master and click on show 14 more. So and expand this uh, pane here. You notice here there are seven steps in remote branches. So remote branches, that means uh, our these are all the branches that are located on our repository on GitHub. But currently, we haven't downloaded all those uh, all these branches. So let's head over to step one, start a code, and click on checkout. So basically, you're telling Android Studio, hey, I want to download that branch on our local system. Now you check here. Step one starter code is downloaded on a local system. If you see this get dependencies, be sure to click it so you won't get any errors. Perfect. And now you, uh, if, if this appears, just press again, and uh, it will go in a, in a while. So 
it takes some time for Android Studio to update you know, all, all the portions of the app. Press Control S, hit Control S, and you should see everything change back to uh, our start, right? Now we are in step one, start a goal. So if you notice, it's just a blank screen. And so that's where we're going to start to implement our to-dos. So hit to-do, and you'll notice there are nine to-dos in our app. So first things first. In our main.dart, you notice we are calling home screen. And so this home screen is already done for us. Remember in our week two, we implemented a separate screen, I mean a separate dart file for the screen. That's basically what you've done right now. So in our home screen.dart, it's it's nothing, it's just an empty screen with a container. And all screens as usual, we have a scaffold. And so main.dart, basically our home uh, page of our app points to this home screen widget that's basically a container. So our first to do is let us add some colors to our app. So we haven't done this. This is a new step that we have implemented in this week. This is basically in our main.dart, you notice that this on a material app, there's a theme property that takes in a theme data uh, object. Now within this theme data object, so hit enter, there are multiple properties here. There's a property called primary color. So change the primary color to colors dot brown and hit control S to give it, give it a hot restart, a hot reload. And you notice this color changes. So this is basically our primary color of our app. So I can change this to red and you notice this becomes red. So the current theme that, that's there in our app is brown. So we will change this to brown. Our primary color dark is um, going to be colors brown. And this is something that you might not have seen. You also have shades of the same color. So click on this color, bring the cursor there, and hit Control Q. You would notice this quick documentation in Android Studio. Uh, and if you're on VS Code, just hover over this, and you should get a quick documentation. You would notice that each color has shades. So for the color, uh, primary color dark, we're going to give it a dark shade of 700. And for our light color, we're going to give primary color light colors dot uh, brown and a much lighter shade of 100. And for our accent color, we're going to give it a colors dot uh, light green. Uh, so we can give it light green accent also, but we're just going to stick with the usual light green. And our app should uh, get those colors. Now, you might have a question on what primary color and accent color is or what they are. Uh, so primary color and accent color is something that we're going to be using throughout our app. This is a global color that's going to be used throughout our app. So if anything is a primary content, like our app bar or our, our like anything that's primary, we would access the primary color of our app. So uh, you can read the documentation of you know, material design. Um, so you know what these colors are, but in layman's terms, to break it down, if there's anything that's 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 uh, that takes the primary focus of our app, well then we will have a primary color property. I mean, our primary color will be used. And if anything is stands out, we use our accent color for anything that stands out. So it'll be much more apparent in the future. So uh, not to worry about that. Now we have completed our theme. Let's head over to home screen and let's start to work on our home screen. So our first thing is change this container to a widget called list view dot builder. And again, uh, if you don't want to follow along, not a problem if you just want to watch because we even have implemented a solution code for it. So, um, and if you're stuck, you can directly like, uh, uh, not a problem. So the code is highly structured, so you, you'll be fine. So now list view dot builder and notice that it takes something called item builder. So what is a list view? So if you've used, if you've done Android development, if you've followed our series, our previous Android weekly series, so there we covered recycler views. So basically, if you know what recycler views are, it's basically the same thing that's implemented here. List views is synonymous with recycler views. If you haven't used recycler views, not a problem at all. A list view is a vertical or a horizontal, basically an arrangement, a linear arrangement of widgets. So in our list view builder, this item builder, so you can click on this property and hit control Q. You notice it takes a function that has a context, 
and that has an int, right? And it returns a widget. So uh, if that confuses you, not a problem. It will be much more clear now. So type these brackets here, context, and, and after that, be sure to put the curly braces. So everything from what is highlighted right now is basically a method, right? An anonymous method or an anonymous function. Anonymous meaning there is no name for this. So if you notice here, I'm not naming this method. I'm directly passing it to item builder. Now, within this item builder, so hit Control Alt L for reformatting the code. The comma here, Control Alt L, right? And here we will return something, right? So if you notice here at the top, you have a list of dogs. Um, and this dog class, let me uh, show you what this dog class is. So under our lib models, we have our dog dot dot. And if you click on it, it is a model class. So if you are familiar with Java, uh, it is synonymous with something called Pojo, plain old Java object. If you aren't, not a problem. Um, it basically is a model class for each dog. So it contains the name, the code of the dog, uh, the origin, you know, temperament, so on and so forth, and even the list of images. And this is a is our constructor for creating that dog object. So uh, what we have right now in our home screen is we have a list of dogs. So if you are familiar with with like if you are confused with what a list is, it's basically an array. Uh, so in Flutter, arrays are called lists. So a list of these dog objects uh, called dogs. Now what we want to do is we want to iterate to these dogs. And for each of those dogs, we will return something called a dog card. As simple as that. So we are going to, um, like every time this list view needs an object, it will give us an index and we will um, return a dog card. Now within this dog card, hit control space. You notice that we have to pass in a dog to populate this dog card. So this dog card is basically, uh, so I, yep, so I have it here. So dog card is basically each of the, each of this dog card here. So I'm scrolling too fast there, but basically this dog card is each of this, the, the, each of this block. Now we want to pass a dog here and it will populate that card. That's our plan, right? So pass in here dog and for the dog property, dogs and index. So we have completed step seven and within our list builder, a list view dot builder. So after item builder, there's another property that we have to specify. So now if you press control S, you will get an error or you get this this red stuff here that says you know, the range, it gives some error of the range. So to fix it, type your item count. And here type in dogs.length. So let's go over what happened here. So basically we are telling the list view that we have these many dogs. And now the list view asks you that, hey, I know that you have these many dogs, but now what do you want to display for each dog? And that is specified by this by this item view, uh, by this item builder method. So for each index, we return the dog card with that particular dog. So uh, it'll be much more clear in about step four or so. Uh, so this was step one and now hit control S and you should reach this step here. So our step one is basically a blank screen. So we have completed step one. So as always, I will check if there are any questions in the comments. So if we can feature some questions, just any questions. I'll, I'm ready to take any questions. So there's no bad or you know uh, bad questions which people might might think. So yes, looks like someone has tagged me. So I will. Yeah, this was the thing with the office hours. Uh, looks like uh, all right. So it, you can just tag me here, and I will uh, answer those questions. If there are any questions on the YouTube live chat, we can feature them now after step one. It's a very interactive session. Absolutely, submit your questions via chat, and I will be. Uh, happy to answer those. Cool. So if there are no questions, uh, I will move over to step two. So first things first, head over to your terminal if you're doing it in Android Studio and type here git add dot and git commit dash m 
and within these uh, these double quotation marks type in your any message basically you are saving you are committing your file and adding some message so you can just write here completed step 1 enter so now all this blue stuff did disappear since you have saved these changes blue means you have edited those lines so you have saved those changes head over now and download step 2 start a code so step to start a code and then check out. And now you should get the new list of to-dos. So if you had any problem with, with implementing step one, not a problem at all. Just head over to step two, start a code, and step one is already implemented for you. So if you're ever stuck, you can work on it later, you know, after the workshop if you want, or you can ask questions to Dalton and me. Uh, but for now, you can follow along by heading over to step two, start a code. Now, this step, as it says in the readme, uh, that I forgot to put on GitHub, but I'll put it soon. Our step two is we're going to download all the dog breed information from our online API. So the API that we're going to use today uh, is something called the dogapi.com. So I will paste the link in the comment section, which if someone can uh, paste that in the comments, that'll be perfect. So this is an the API that we're going to use. So once you're at this page, head over to docs. So you're basically accessing the documentation of this API. So you notice these API endpoints. So if you remember last week, we, co we covered APIs in detail. Uh, so there we just did one endpoint, but now we have multiple endpoints. So if you notice here, this endpoint breeds, this basically is, so click on this list breeds. Uh, this is basically scroll all the way down and click on the send, right, the send. Um, and you notice this is a sample response, right? You notice here, uh, now this could seem a bit hard to read, not a problem at all. Click on this and click Control A and Control C. So Control A is, to, is a shortcut to select everything and Control C is to copy it. Now head over and create a new tab and type here JSON formatter. On Google search, I use this one, uh, JSON formatter.curiousconcept.com. So click on the whichever one you prefer, basically, and paste that JSON response that you had received. Remember, from here, this JSON response, paste it here in this formatter and click on process. So now this JSON will be much more interactable. So you can click on this plus to get more space here, and then click on this minus that says collapse nodes. So be sure to ask questions because this is a topic that we covered last week, but I know people could have some problems with it. So I can't stress enough. Uh, I don't want you, know, you to get uh, the fall behind you feel. <laughs> All right, that, that's uh, unfortunate, but pretty amazing uh, to see the, the, the amazing frozen animation play on the screen. Um, that's pretty amazing. So yes, as I was saying, I can't stress enough on uh, how you know respond, how interactive the session is. So I don't want you to fall behind and think Flutter is too difficult. It is very easy. It, it is it, you know, the easiest way to build mobile apps. So ask questions as much as possible, and I will answer, almost try to answer all of them you know, to the best of my ability. So make sure to use that. And also Dalton is in the chat. and. Uh, He left all the nodes and whoops, looks like I, I froze again. Uh, yeah, all right, so, so now uh, click on this minus icon that was here and now expand this array. You notice now you have this huge list of JSON objects, this huge array of JSON objects. So let's expand one of them. And now if you expand them, you will notice that each object has a couple of fields bread for you know what's it what's this dog bread for uh, the name of the breed so affin pincher which is our affin pincher I, 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 I may not be pronouncing it correctly origin germany france temperament our weight right the metric and imperial weights and height the you know, imperial and metric units so our main plan is we want to download this response inside of our app and we want to parse this response here so parse it. 
just like how this JSON parser has parsed this response. So you can extract the bread for, you can extract the string, right? And display it in our app. So we're going to do that now. So if all of you can head over to this link here and you would notice, uh, so click on breeds and list the breeds. So if there's any questions, uh, you can just interrupt me and just place it on the chat and we can answer those since this is a very important step. So uh, any questions are always welcome. I'll answer those as and when they come. So if we can just feature the questions as and when they come. Uh, so under breeds and then list breeds, be sure to copy this URL. So this is how we're going to query or, or we're going to send a request to the API. Now head over to Android Studio to have a hand out over Android Studio. And you notice you have all these um, uh, these to do's here. So let's tackle these to do's in order. So first to do says, convert the stateless widget to a stateful widget. Now, what does this mean? So if you notice here, this list of dogs, so click on this and you'll notice here there's a warning. So just hover over it and see this warning. This class is marked as immutable. Immutable means unchangeable. But one or more of its instance fields aren't final. So this basically it's complaining that this dog's list is not marked final. So now this warning will go away. But now this warning appears here. So basically stateless widgets are widgets whose state will never change. But we know that our state will change, right? Currently this list of dogs is empty, but we want to download the list, we want to download the dogs from the internet and populate this list of dogs. So we need to convert the stateless widget into a widget that accepts changes in state. How do we do that, you ask? Click on this stateless widget, a very simple thing, Alt Enter for Android Studio and Control Dot for VS Code and click on this convert to stateful widget. And you notice, whoops, <laughs> all right, when you do it, all the to-dos disappear. So uh, be sure to control X all these to-dos. Right, control X, right. Uh, so this can, so cut all those to-dos and click on this stateless widget, Alt Enter and click on convert to stateful widget. Now you uh, ob notice, like uh, observe carefully, when I click on this button, this now turns to a stateful widget, but now you get a new class, right? A new class called home screen state. And here, this is allowed to have non-final fields. So this list of dogs will change. So uh, basically, uh, in layman's terms, stateless widget cannot change state ever. Stateful widgets can change state however times you want. So we convert it to a stateful widget. And now let's paste our to-dos and let us tackle those to-dos in order. So, uh, uh, so our first step is let's override in its state. So one uh, trick to do that in Android Studio is control O. And to search here, that is type in init state. And you notice there's only one method. So click on it and click on OK. And now if you notice, Android Studio has already given the code for us. So you can, it pasted it in the wrong place. So just click Control X and copy this code. And let's paste it here where we want it. Cool. Now, this init state, that means init. I right? think that about the English definition of it. It means when you begin, when you start. Init means initialize when you start. So basically, this this code block will be executed whenever our app starts. So within here uh, is basically we're going to download our dogs. So let's create a new method called underscore download dog info and the parenthesis. Uh, yes, the parenthesis and the curly braces and do it this way. And as we discussed in week three, so basically last week, Type here a keyword called async. That basically says that this code block will be run on the background thread. Remember, web queries have always have to be done on the background thread. That's very important. So what we're going to do is here we're going to call this method called download dog info, and then 
it will call this method. This method will run on the background thread and will download our list of dogs. Now, a couple of things here to note, a couple of things to notice here. Notice this underscore. What is this underscore? Now, that is pretty amazing. So in, in Java, you would have to type your private for a private method, but dash takes that to a next level by just saying, put an underscore before the, before the method name to make it a private method. So currently, if you put an underscore before the method name, it is assumed that this method is a private method. So if I do this, this method here is a public method. So we just, we don't want any other class to access this down to, to be able to download the dogs. So what we do is we make it a private method within our home screen. So if you see this, just click get dependencies and hopefully it goes away. Cool. Now we've completed to do one, to do two, three, four. Now to do five, it takes you to pubspec.yaml, right? To do five is here. Now, remember from last week, uh, if you don't, not a problem, ask questions and we can feature them on the screen. I will answer those. HTTP package is used to download um, or, or to make HTTP requests to our API. If this seems confusing, ask it in the chat and I'll help you out. Cool. So now uh, head over to pub.dev. Remember our our um, pub.dev is the official website for you know the very famous Flutter packages and search for HTTP and click on the first package HTTP package. As you can see, it is you know a lot of people like it. It's the you can just call it like the the standard of HTTP requests. Copy this the first line here, Control C. It contains the package name and the version number. Head back over to your to do and below this. Make sure it is below the, the hashtag, paste this line and paste the colon here and paste the caret sign or another exponential sign. And now run pub get. So if you have used Python, it's basically pip install, right? Or, or uh, yeah, basically your pip, right? Your pip commands to uh, download your dependencies. So now you're, you are depending on this HTTP package. Now you have, you have run, uh, pub get, which is equivalent to pip install. Um, so now in your home screen, right, you, you, you can import that package. So let's import it. Just like how we would do in Python. So search here for HTTP dot dot. And after that, type in here as HTTP. Again, this, this keyword very much like Python, right? And if you don't know Python, not to worry. It's, uh, we're gonna cover that here, right? The dot code here, so don't worry. We have imported our HTTP packet. Now, in our download dog info, so since all this code has to be done within this method, let me copy all these to do's. And by the way, since these to do's are a little hard, you know, harder than usual, uh, I've even commented them out. So if you, <laughs> so if you want, you can just uh, you know uncomment them out and paste it. So uh, it's a good way, if, you know, if you just want to uh, follow along with the workshop, but not actually code, right? Some people just want to have some fun, just experiment with Flutter, but you know, may not be uh, wanting to invest that much time. Uh, we have got you folks covered too. So let's see, within dog info, so uh, our first thing is actually let me paste it within the method. Right, uh, so we can we can see it now here. So first thing is let's have a try block, and then a finally block, which is do similar that similarity to Python make it so nice. Absolutely, way easier than making a REST client in Java. Absolutely, that thing is is perfectly correct there. Uh, that it simplifies um, uh, you know making these requests and uh, try catch and that is amazing. Let's just leave it at that. It's it's amazing. So now you have your try your try finally uh, construct here. Now, eight, let's create a client. Um, so HTTP, which is the package that you just imported, HTTP client, client is equal to HTTP dot client. Now, one cool thing which uh, Dalton you know, mentioned of how cool that is, you don't need a new keyword. 
new keywords in the latest version of that is made optional. So you're basically creating an instance of this class, but without the new keyword. So it saves you some lines of code, right? It's pretty cool. Now, you've created this client. Uh, now, yep. So if you want, you can just you know, copy these lines of code, right? Control C, paste it here, Control V, and uncomment them out. And it would work, right? So we have already done it for you, but I'm going to, say, to explain everything in detail. I'm going to write everything. But I'll write it a little quickly. So um, uh, since this is absolutely long, but I will slow down whenever you want. And uh, I'll also try to go as slow as possible. So uh, again, it's very interactive. Let me know how best, I mean, how can I make this session as best for you? So our API URL is equal to. So now our API URL, remember a URL that you just copy. Uh, yeah, it looks like I've lost it. So head back over to your, uh, right over here and copy this URL. This is our request URL, right? So head back over to our Android Studio and paste this URL here. Okay, like breeds. Now we need to make the request. So how do we make the request? HTTP dot response response is equal to. So uh, let's forget about the await for now. Client dot get and API URL. So basically, the HTTP, this will give an error, not to worry. The HTTP package has this get method. Right? The client has a get method. Get method means you're sending a get request. So if you aren't familiar with what get requests are, not to worry. Just imagine that you are asking the API to give you information. Get is like get, right? I want to get something. I want to get information. So I'm going to get the breeds from this dog, uh, dog API. So I will give the URL here. Now you get this error here. Hover over it to see the error. You get this future response kind of error. So basically, you have to say await. So await says that this request can take a long time. So I will have to halt the, the execution here. So await means halt the execution. Uh, so it will wait for this to return a value. And then only the next line of instruction will be executed. So uh, if it's not clear, ask me questions. So I'll be happy to explain. Good. The response, you've captured the response. Now, we have a body variable, that basically JSON decode. So you, you want to parse this response. So this JSON decode, uh, it's basically you are parsing the string, right? A response dot body is of like type where or type type string. So you want to parse that string, right? This is a string, by the way. This is a string. You want to parse the string into a into something like this. This JSON, right? JSON response. Twelve seconds later. <laughs> yeah, I think I froze there. Let me explain that again. Uh, so, uh, so this JSON decode is basically you want to uh, uh, you want to parse that string into this this traversable JSON. You want to parse this string as we have here, parse this string into traversable JSON as you see here in the JSON formatter. So, let's head back over into our code, and you have this JSON format. You have done nine, so you can just copy paste if you want. Now. Let's uh, cr uh, create uh, a list of dogs called temp dogs and an empty list. So basically, if you want to, uh, whatever dogs you have downloaded, you want to paste it here in this temp dogs. And then what we want to do is finally update it in our main global dogs variable. So this is currently a local variable within this block, right? Within this dog download dog info. Now we want to paste it first in temp dogs, and after the temp dogs is completely populated, we want to just say dogs is equal to temp dogs. That's our plan. So let's do for uh, pair dog in uh, in body. So this is basically like a for each loop in Dart. You have a for in loop kind of a thing. Uh, for each in, uh, as in Java when you do the the colon, right? No colon here, it's in. And what you're gonna do is we want to, like, right, this is a, an array. 
So that's why we're doing for dog in body, right? As you see here, um, for dog JSON uh, in body. So it looks like we named a different variable, um, but we'll just call it body here. Uh, cool. Now we have that dog. So now let us parse uh, uh, that, that dog here. So first steps first is let's create, just so we are uh, much familiar with it now, control space. And you notice here, you need to pass some variables. So for name, let's pass in here. Oops, now dog name. So basically this dog here is this object from here to here, right? This object. Now from that, you want to access the name field. So to access it, very simple, dog name. Next, quote. So um, for quote, actually, we won't download it from the API, right? You notice here, there is no quote. This API just gives us dog breed information. So to download the quote, uh, there's a, a library, I mean, the, that we have created you know, in, in our starter code. So um, this basically just call this method get random quote and it gives you a random quote out of all these quotes. So uh, you can just do quote utils name uh, quote and uh, let's see what else bread for. So let's do dog bread for uh, next breed group dog breed group. And by the way, if you want, you can just copy paste the comments. I've commented the code out right. All this code is commented out here, so you can just do that. Um, I will eventually come to the com like what code we have here. I'm coming in in, in steps. So read group then uh, for height. Height is something unique. So you want to do dog height and imperial. Notice why within our root object we want to first go to height. Within the height object we want to go to imperial and copy this thing. Right? It's a traversal. So within our root, go to height. Within height, go to imperial, right? So ask me if there are any questions. There seem to be some questions in the comments if we can feature them on the screen and if there are and uh, um, we can answer those, cool. So um, perfect. Right, now let's do for weight, dog, weight and imperial, right? Uh, let's see what else fields. Forget image URLs for now. Lifespan dog. There's a field called life span. I think bread for and breed group is actually. Uh, notice a breed group. It is given in all small with underscore, right? So you want to use the same field. So uh, we use the same field here. And basically, we are extracting the information from that JSON object. And we are creating a dog instance of it. So lifespan origin, the dog origin, and temperament, so dog temperament. Yeah, I'll just mess up the spelling here temperament uh, and a semicolon. So this is basically a dog object. So now let us add this, this, this uh, dot. Uh, Right, your, your dot dog object into temp dogs. So this was currently a list of JSON dog objects. You converted, you created a, a, a dot, you know, object over here. Now temp dogs dot add, and let us open the parenthesis here and close it here, and Control Alt L. Basically, you notice here temp dogs add. You add this dog in our temp dogs. Now. There's some other stuff that we have to do actually. Currently, if you notice here, there is no image URLs. Now, that's where things get slightly complex. So let's observe closely on how do we solve that problem. So actually, if you notice in the API documentation, our breeds, it only gives us breed information. Notice there is no image uh, information here. So what we need to do now is go to images, so we need to query the get images endpoint, this images endpoint. And now instead of forward slash breeds, we have to do forward slash images search and send. And now you notice, so also in our, actually in our query parameters, 
pass in our breed ID of let's say one. So notice in our breed here, each breed has a unique ID, right? Each breed has a unique ID, nine. So now for this Alaskan Malamute, I can get all the images of Alaskan Malamute. Simply breed ID, I have to give it here nine. And for limit, I want to give it, let's say, maximum of 50 images and send. Now you know, uh, notice, in each object, you also have this URL here, which is the image URL. So I will copy this and I will paste it in the browser so you can see what's going on. And let me delete and let me add an H here. You notice it's the Alaskan Malamute picture. So now when you query on this, uh, we can't be do uh, generically with a for each loop. Uh, generically, uh, yes, so, so we are using a for each loop. I'm a little confused what you mean by generically. Uh, why, why do we need to know the structure of dog objects specifically to be able to extract the data from the stream? Ah, this is a good question. So um, like we need to know what kind of response, the format of the response that our API will give us. So we now that we know how our JSON object will look like, then we can see that, hey, the bread for field is named as bred underscore for. And then I can create my dart, uh, we can create our dart object by extracting it using like what we expect. So we cannot exactly create it generically by just, you know, uh, like we, we need to, beforehand, we need to know what, what uh, field names our response will give us. And then we need to use those specific names. So uh, you are correct in the for each loop, but we actually will use something even better by uh, not defining it gen generically, but we'll define it. I hope that's what you meant by generic. If not, put it in the comments and I will answer to it. I, uh, yes, we use a for each loop and we pass the parameters this way. Cool. Whoops, uh, looks like I froze again. Uh, so, um, uh, yes, so yes, we use a for each loop, uh, but we don't pass it generically. What we do is we uh, know the response beforehand and we extract those fields uh, in, a, in our code and then we create our data out there, right? Uh, it'll be much more clear like when you do it many times. So um, let's get used to this, this way of doing it. So don't worry about this. This will be second nature to you once you do it a couple of times and um, I'll be always happy to help you out. So don't worry about that. Now, within our each dog, oh, by the way, there's a new, in our query, since we have, uh, actually, you know what we'll do uh, in our images. So head to the, the, remember images and get all public images in the query, add a new query parameter here called include breeds. So include breeds and in the query value, type your false. And now if you send the request, whoops, uh, I think I made a spelling mistake here. Include reads and now click on send. And now you notice you just get an array of images, right? So when you query this uh, forward slash images, forward slash search endpoint, you will by default, you even get the breed information, but we don't want that. We have already, we have already downloaded that from our forward slash breeds endpoint, right? You, know, you remember this? We just did it right now. So uh, we, we even pass this include breeds is equal to false. And now we, we traverse this JSON list of images and then we extract each, each URL for that. So uh, let's see how we do that in our code. So um, here is, we downloaded uh, through the, the forward slash breeds endpoint. Now what we will do is, we will uh, create string images API. And uh, so you can basically, so head over to original request and it gives you what request you have to use. So just copy this. And if you ever get lost in any step, not to worry at all, everything is commented out. So uh, here, right, you can just copy and paste this. So don't worry about that. Paste this here. And now breed ID should be dynamic. So put in, uh, uh, remember the string interpolation in Dart, it is new. So breed ID is equal to 
uh, dog ID. So what's happening here? Uh, this dog JSON object, how we extracting name bread for, right? Within our dog, there's even an, a, a field called ID here. So what we're doing is, uh, we, we want to get the images for that particular ID. So we are passing the ID in that query parameter here and include breeds is equal to false and limit is equal to 50. Now we're still getting some error here. So uh, let's see, expect to find semicolon. Yeah, let's put a semicolon there. Uh, we have our images now, just like as we did for here. Let's do an HTTP dot response. Uh, images response is equal to await. So let's await for that and client dot uh, get with our images API URL. Images API. Let me rename. So a quick shortcut is Shift F six. And you can rename all references of that variable. So I'll rename this to API URL. So again, if you miss that, Shift F6 to rename all the references. And uh, now let us parse uh, this image's response. So if you feel it's too complex, not a problem. We can ask questions. And uh, also for now, you can just copy paste the comments here. So no problem about that. Uh, so now here we have the JSON response. Let's uh, decode this, by the way. So uh, var images body, I'll just call it images body. Uh, and now let's do JSON decode images response. So we'll decode, uh, oh yeah, dot body. We get the string of other response. And now let's iterate, oops, for var uh, image in you see images body, it currently, let's go to images, Imi, uh, let's go to body. So images body is currently a, let me actually control C and paste it in the formatter. Process. And let's collapse all nodes. Notice that this array, it's a list of images, right? Each is a, a list of image, image URL, image URL. So what we want to do is we want to traverse this list of image URLs and uh, list string image urls is equal to empty list. And now what we'll do is uh, let's do image urls dot add. So basically, we want to create a list of strings, not a list of these objects here, right? So we want to extract this URL field and dot add. Now here we'll have to add image and what you want to extract from that? The URL field. So this for each loop, it iterates through all these JSON objects. I mean, this JSON object and this JSON object and this JSON object. So, right. And then each JSON object is represented by this image variable. You want to iterate, I mean, you want to, for each image variable, you want to, right? I hope you're getting the, the flow of our app. Right, for each image variable, you're adding it to a list of strings. So if this feels complex, I mean, uh, don't worry, you have the comments, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is, uh, maybe, so yes, I, I mean, I'm, uh, I, I hope I can solve all your problems. So uh, just put your questions in, I'll try my best to help you out. So list of strings. Now in our dog, you can even pass image URLs is equal to image URLs. And yes, so let's see if you've completed all the to-dos. Yep. So just uh, you know what we can do is when we come inside this loop, let's add your print. Oops, uh, ID. So basically, we, we uh, like what we want to do is we want to check in the in our uh, console when we enter this loop. So now, if everything is done correctly, uh, be sure to press the play button. The hot reload won't work, or it may work once or twice, but it won't work all the time. So whenever you are uh, writing code within your init state, you would have to click the hot restart button. So if everything is done correctly, if you get some errors, we'll fix those errors. Uh, let's see. If there are no errors, yep, we should get all these. Uh, so we're downloading all those images right now. Uh, and if you ever got stuck in the step, not to worry, uh, the solution code is provided. So 
everything will be fine. And if we complete this step with no errors, yep, no errors here. So very good. So we have completed step two. So quick refresher. I know this is something hard. Oh yes, one more thing, and finally, client dot close. Just like how, uh, let me this client. Let's keep it outside the try. So just like how you know uh, dot slash. Right. Remember in C, if you if you code it in C, uh, sometimes with the with the print you also have to give a, a dot flush at the end. Or if you are, so, I'm just throwing these terms, but you you don't need to know C or something. But if you are familiar with C, right, you have to do the dot flush. Um, or if, in socket programming, right, you have to do dot close. Similarly, if you do client dot close in the finally block, so uh, you're closing the client, right? Yeah. So uh, if you're familiar with networking, basically you want to close that connection. Right, so um, a try block completes and close. So what do we do here? We requested the, the API for breed information. We passed the breed information using JSON decode. For each breed, what we did was uh, to download all the images of that breed. We uh, after querying the main the main URL. Now we query the forward slash images slash search endpoint. We passed in the breed ID. Uh, to get all the images as associated with that breed. We uh, passed that response to, then we created a for loop to iterate through the JSON images that basically are uh, to basically pass through all these objects here, right? This for loop, it pass this for loop, it passes through all those objects. Then image URLs dot add. So we're basically extracting the URL field of each object. This is a string, right? This is a string, and then we are pasting it. We are adding it to our image URLs list of strings, and then we're giving it to our dog. Cool. So all the code was was here. Uh, you, you can just uncomment this code out, and it should work. And um, also, this one thing you have to do here is actually. Uh, so at the end, not not. So let's check one thing. Yeah. So after the for loop, right? Remember we we added all the dogs to temp dogs. Now we need to do one final step uh, called dogs is equal to temp dogs. That's it. So things really confusing. Uh, like I mean, I'll try my best to help. So ask any questions. Um, at the end of every step, I'll also check Discord. So if any questions, I'll check that out. Uh, so basically. This global dogs variable, after you have done all the downloads and okay, let's just leave it in layman's terms. After you've done all the networking operations, you've downloaded all, you've downloaded all the information, update it. That's it, right? In layman's terms, that's what we're doing. Uh, download it from the internet and save it here. Now, one new thing you have to do here is something called set state. So I'll, I went a little quickly there. Type your set state. And click on enter, and within this braces, control X braces here. So uh, basically, uh, whenever you want to update, uh, the, the whenever you you want to update the UI of the app, you always have to call set state. Set state basically is a way of telling Flutter that hey, there might be some changes in the UI, so Flutter. Update those. Like I'm basically telling Flutter. Like we are telling Flutter that hey, there may be some changes since we have downloaded the dogs. New dogs are already like. Let me slow down. New dogs are downloaded. So Flutter, hey, update your UI to show all these new downloaded dogs. Right. Set state. Flutter, set the state. Right. So I hope you understood that. And finally, we completed with step two. So now let's. Yeah, basically you should. Um, oh yes, actually we are not completed. Uh, there's a few more to do's in the dog card. Just one to do here. So uh, inside the container, just write child, and text for this will be. Oops, dog dot name. And now if everything has gone correctly, you will see a list of. Uh, let's do a hot reset of the app. And it should download the list again. 
And basically what we're doing is this dog card. So let's go back to a home screen. Scroll all the way down to this very ugly looking comments, right? Uh, we're building this list builder and each list builder gives a dog card and you pass in a dog. So now you, you notice this, this dog card. We're just giving the name, right? You get all this list of dogs, right? I hope you are, at least if not understanding a lot, but like break four, you can have a list of, oops. Uh, yeah, so break four, some of them are null, so they're giving errors, but uh, let's, let's, let's do the heights of dogs, right? You can list all the heights. Okay. So I hope you found some, uh, this took something out of this step and ask questions if there were any. Cool. So let me save this changes and then we'll check your questions. Uh, get M completed. Step two. And we'll commit those changes. Cool. Now let me see, I think three tags. So how, where do you create dog card and what's it? Uh, yes, uh, so it's a good question. And I think Dalton's answered it. Uh, and also, yes, let me also answer it. Whoever tags me, I'll always answer your questions. And thank you, Dalton, for answering uh, too. So dog card is basically each dog has a card here, right? This dog names, control S. Like currently this dog card, so look in the Flutter Inspector and click on this uh, show layout margins or show debug paint. You notice this, this dog card here. So each dog card is to represent that dog within the list, right? So dog card is basically that. And who implemented this? It's not provided by Flutter. It's given to like, we, we, we made this in the starter code to save us some time. So it basically takes in a dog object and constructs. It's, it's very basic, but um, yeah, but we have to do it. Uh, Flutter doesn't provide it to us. Cool. So, okay, some two. Okay, that's some other tags. All right. Cool. Any questions on YouTube? We can feature them now. And if not, uh, so put your questions in the YouTube comments and I'll answer those. Let's download step three starter code. So, step three starter code and then check out. So, we download it to a local system. And if you ever, like, if you miss something out in step two, not to worry at all. Just click step to save the changes using these two commands in the terminal and then um, switch your branch to step three starter code because step two is already completed in step three starter code. So if you're ever stuck, not to worry at all, just follow along with step three, right? Uh, cool. Now in step three, we're going to work on our dog card. So let's see our the step two, we should get this step, which we got. Now step three is instead of showing just the text, we're going to show these beautiful cards. I'm going to learn some amazing widgets here. Now this uh, could get a little complex. So um, again, as usual, uh, you know, some of it is, is commented out. So you can just uncomment it out. And uh, let's try our best to, to do this. So now our container, let's see. Let me hide this. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, we can feature it on the YouTube chat. And uh, I'll move ahead if you want. Cool. So delete the container. So. We won't have a container, so replace it with card. So, card. and control S, you see, uh, blank stuff here, right, blank. Uh, so now, card, so so uh, the child of the card, you need something, a cool, amazing widget that you will love, something called list tile. The so list tile, you'll see what it is now, control S, no change should appear here. Yeah, okay, you'll see some, some things there. You see this, this list? of cards here, right, this list of cards, cool. Now, to do four, come here to this uh, pubspec.yaml. So now we have to, uh, there's a cached network image package that's, letter, that's there on pub.dev. So it's not, it doesn't come out of the box. We have to ex explicitly download it. So uh, let's search for it. So head over to pub.dev which is your main repository of all these cool Flutter widgets or Flutter libraries. Uh, so it's the first one, cached network image. And uh, copy this. And if you, uh, and we can even paste in the chat if, if uh, people want to see that. Um, and it's good, so YouTube is, is fine, looks like. So that, that's good to hear. Um, right, so here, let's paste that line that you just copied. So the package name with the version number, 
have the colon and have the caret sign. So uh, now when you click pub get, it's equivalent to your Python pip install. So you are downloading all these uh, dependencies onto your local system, right? Uh, so so that's that's our our thing. Uh, now if you head over to home screen, now there's one thing. Whenever you add a new dependency on your pubstore.yaml that involves something visual, something visual, you might have to do a cold restart. That's just the way it is. So since images is something visual, let's take it, let's play it safe by pressing the stop button and pressing the play button again. It will take time, but it won't give us some errors in the future, right? Even if you don't do it, it's fine. It won't give you like a, uh, an unsolvable error, but let's just play it safe, right? Uh, and stop it and do a cold restart. Uh, so this is a very exciting step. We're going to learn list style. So I hope you're excited and uh, that you, you want to see something. So uh, till then, I'll see if someone has tagged me here to see one extra tag. What's the difference between using HTTP client or very good question, uh, Keyless. That's extremely good question. So let me head back over to home screen. And if you notice here, we have used client instead of directly HTTP.get. Now, client is used when you want to make multiple requests to the same server. So if you notice here, the same server is being queried, the dogapi.com, right, api.dogapi.com, api.dogapi.com, the same server is being request, it is being, the requests are being sent to the same server, except which endpoints I'm using. So uh, if you're familiar with you know, something of computer networking, if not, not a problem. Basically, you want to set up a connection, and after every request, usually the connection will be destroyed. So instead of uh, when you want to make multiple requests, instead of creating connection, destroying connection, creating connection, destroying connection, creating like, this process will be um, time consuming and resource hungry. It will take a lot of your resources. Instead, use this client and do client.get. So client, it just creates one connection and it doesn't close after you get the response. Right? Then you can make multiple requests through that client. So think of client as a pipe. You create a pipe between you and the API. You send your, so if, if you can show my screen on the, my video on the, on the screen. So basically you, you have a pipe. So uh, if you can have the, uh, my picture uh, come on the, on the screen. So um, we have a, a, a pipe. Um, and then the one end of the pipe is you, the user. The other end of the pipe is the API. So you don't want to destroy that pipe after every request. You want to send a request to the pipe, get a response. So if you, I, I don't know why. So if you can get uh, my image on the on the screen. Twelve seconds later. <laughs> Looks like I I froze there. So um, yes. So uh, yes, that's what we use. So in short, client it. It uh, keeps it gives you a persistent connection that won't be destroyed. Uh, okay, how does client get to store a, se a session? How does client get to store a session? Uh, so that's like implemented behind the scenes on how this client will you know make the connection. So I, I believe by session you mean the the connection. Um, so if that's your question, then yes, uh, behind the scenes you know the the package it implements all the the the, the nitty gritties of the, the computer networking concepts. So uh, for us, the developer, we can just focus on our business logic and leave all the boilerplate code to, to, H, to HTTP package. It's a very good question, Steve, and, and uh, I, I believe your turn point. I forgot the name, but good, very good questions. Cool. Our app has started here, so uh, very nice. Now we're in a dog car. Let's start to do five. OK. A list style leading. So our leading with it is a cached network image. Network image. Um, cached network image, it takes in. So this warning here, it says, remove this. Give it an image URL property. So image URL is equal to dog. That image URL. Image URL. Oops. And so in, from all these images, uh, play the first one is basically what you want. So now, if everything works correctly, 
yep. and so so we get some 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 problem, some problem stuff here which we'll fix so you get all these these uh some small errors here let's so you notice that each image it is of different width but it doesn't look good it looks very ugly right you want to keep it in one line so let's give it a constant width of 100.0 control s and we should see it right in one line uh now um it seems again ugly here you have some white space here so to do to solve that there's a fit property box fit dot cover now this is a bit of a problem since it crops the image so some dogs they have their images are cropped so traditionally you want to use a good api uh, uh, but this api is is sufficient for our use case so um, technically all images should have been you know of one dimension or approximately of a landscape dimension or of vertical dimension but this is the best we can do for now so we'll leave it at that uh, this is for the image uh, now for uh, okay so leading now in a list style is something called title so title will take a text and a text will be dog not name control s notice you get this beautiful title here so flutter is so quick you can see this changes in real time this is not an, an screenshot this is an actual app so it's pretty cool subtitle of this will be text and uh, dog quote oops uh, not within the it's not a, a constant string dog quote so notice now you get this beautiful subtitle that automatically is grayed out and it's it's slightly the subtitle right it takes less emphasis on your screen as compared to the title so now you notice that hey it's sticking to the top and the bottom of the screen so let's add a padding here so uh, just to confirm we are in uh, so here we haven't used the padding but i think we have missed that step uh, but let's add the padding here oh yeah wrap the list style so here wrap the list style with something called a padding widget padding widget so how do i do this uh, tap on list move your cursor to list style and hit alt enter and you can either click this shortcut uh, wrap with padding or you can click wrap with widget and you know type padding here and widget here and now if you hover here padding requires a padding property so padding and um, you can type your edge insects dot symmetric as we had done in the week two and here let's add a vertical padding of 20.2 now you get some uh, some more space here right oops sorry, something went wrong symmetric vertical padding uh, it's far more bigger than than it should be. I think this is ten point oh seems, or five point oh. We don't. Yeah, I think five point oh was was. So change it ten ten point oh. It's, it's not. It's it's about uh, ten point oh, not twenty. Uh, now a couple of things here. Uh, if you notice now, when you scroll all the way down, you have this white. Let's add a uh, loading icon. So within your uh, within your cache network image. There's a, an amazing property called placeholder. Placeholder takes in a method called context. And if you can't follow along, not a problem. It's in the solution. So uh, don't get you know, too scared about that. So don't worry too much. Image URL. And it will return a uh, center. It takes a child. Actually, not center. So let me actually return a circular progress indicator. If you want, you can just like, hey, what's he talking about? Just copy paste this thing. So it won't, right? So I, I don't want to pressurize you too much. Just copy paste that. Now press Control S. And now if you scroll very quickly, right? You notice this indicator that looks very skewed, right? It's skewed horizontally. So let us Alt Enter, wrap it within a container, and Control Alt L, and put a comma here. So Control Alt L. So put a comma after circular progress indicator. Control Alt L. And now for this container, had had a height of twenty five point two, and had a width of twenty five point two. So you are making it a square. So now if you scroll all the way down, oops, it's still Control S. Oh, I think it didn't update. Uh, oh yes, it's and one more step is wrap this container within a center widget. So wrap it within the center so again if you missed it alt enter for android studio and control dot for vs code and click on wrap with center control s and now if you scroll 
you get this uh, this right uh, this beautiful thing and then the image loads so it, it's a gradual change from the this to the uh, I mean from the indicator to the image now what is an error so uh, within the the cache network image so within these two parentheses is anywhere type in here error widget that takes in a context an image URL and uh, uh, and then error here, which we are to concerned with. And now this you have to return, return an image, return an icon. And for the icon, type in here icons dot broken image. So let's say if your any of your image is corrupt, corrupted, your image URL is something. I'm corrupting this on purpose. You will get. Uh, or, or let's say if it is blank, basically. So if, for instance, this it's okay. It's giving a four or three, so it uh, it's a uh, okay. Let, let's so let's give it some blank. Control S. So where it doesn't turn the response, basically. Wait, I think I'm missing something. Uh, So, so technically it should give this, this broken image here. So image URL, so and this is null. So it, yeah, and this would, so, so, so basically uh, if, if there ever is a, an error in the URL or if there's no image there, uh, it would show this broken icon, which I'm not quite sure why it's not showing. I'm not, I might be missing something small, but uh, yeah, that's that's uh, basically what it is. Um, uh, so yeah, so that's that's very good. We have completed step three. Let's just confirm if we have completed uh, thirteen. Yep, we, we finished thirteen also. So uh, very nice progress. We have completed step thirteen. Yeah, you can change the color of the placeholder. A uh, placeholder load loader. Uh, very good, very good question. Uh, your turntable. Uh, yes, you absolutely can. So within your circular progress indicator. Uh, there's a color background color property. Continue this to colors dot um, red if you are if you fancy some red. Uh, now if you get this right. Oh, oh, by the way, yes, yes. Uh, is there some other color here? Yes, add this also to colors dot red. Oops, some errors here. Let's see what's the error. Uh, dot red. Oh, uh, so uh, this, is, this is not so. So uh, it it should be red, and the, the reason is green. It's, it's uh, you can see some bit of green. It's actually taking uh, this color that you provided here, your accent color. Um, so maybe you have to read the documentation a little more to see how to get rid of the green. But yes, you absolutely can. You can change that. Uh, uh, would you mind going over how, how to wrap this widget again? Yes, how to wrap this widget again? Absolutely. So if you want to wrap a widget within a widget, Alt Enter, and then you get so on Android Studio you have Alt Enter. So you can click on Wrap with Widget, and it it gives you this option, right? So you, here you can wrap it within a center, let's say, right? And uh, and click Escape icon or click the Enter key. Uh, keep clicking the Enter until you get the the red border to disappear, right? This red border here disappear. So now let's go back here. Absolutely. Yeah, very good question. So keep them coming in. Um, yeah, control S. And so everything should, should work here. And yeah, we'll change this back to a, and so we get the, uh, the green animation here. Cool. So we've completed step three. So let's save our changes. Turn on. Git add dot and git commit dash m and uh, let's change it like completed step three. P L E T completed step three. And now the blue steps go away since so we've saved the changes. Now uh, let's download step four starter code. So step four starter code and then check out. And again, I always mention this. 
If you haven't completed step three, not to worry at all. Step four has already completed step three. Now be sure to click this get dependencies. Now, if there are any dependency, just, just to update here, all the stuff. And love the efficiency tips that we get in this big fan. Absolutely, Dalton, uh, always here to, I mean, I, I love it too, cool. So control S and just any updates you know, to go to the app. So this is our state in the app so far. And if you click on it, nothing happens, right? So uh, let's see what are we going to do in this in this step. So uh, step three, we design the Docker. Step four, yes, step four is now when you click on an image, we have to go to a new screen. So let's see how we do that. So within our doc card, so this is, let me close some of the stuff that we want to use. Uh, yeah, so within our doc card, so under components, lib components doc card, under doc, oh, oh wait, we are in doc card, all right. So uh, we have to wrap this card within something called a gesture detector. So click on this card and as Dalton asked and uh, uh, alt enter, and wrap with widget. And here you can type in uh, gesture detector. Now, as the name suggests, gesture detector. So uh, it detects your gesture, like taps, double taps, long press. It, it detects all of these. So under gesture detector, uh, th there are multiple callbacks here or you know, multiple fields here. Have the on tap field. And uh, basically, you're returning a method here. To make it easy. Let's just do it this way. Now, within this, if you remember, so I, I don't think we covered, no, we did in the love calculator, we did cover this, but let's cover it again. How do you go from one screen to another? So here there's a thing called navigator dot push named. So this is a little long, so um, no need to memorize this, but let's just do it. And it takes in the context, control space. If, you, if this menu goes away, control P and you get the parameters menu. So be sure your cursor is within the parentheses and the control P and you get the parameters menu. Next you need is um, push name. Yeah, now uh, material page out, right? And am I missing something? Uh, control P, string, string route name, or not, not push name, sorry, push, push. Yep, not push name, material page route. And here there's a builder property, a, a builder, uh, yeah, a builder field. Now for the builder, pass in, you have to pass in a context and it will return our detail screen, which is, right? The, the, when you click on it, you go to the detail screen. Now I know this could be a little confusing for people and uh, let me, control alt L here. Let me format this a little bit neatly. So I hope you can see something. So navigate to the push, and then you, you have to pass in context and a material picture out. A builder that takes in a context and gives you detail screen. Detail screen, it takes in a dog. So for dog, just pass in the dog that's given to the dog card. So each card has a dog. You just pass it to the detail screen. So let me, uh, this line of code, you can paste it in the YouTube chat if anyone wants, but it's also in solution code on, uh, like here, right, in the solution code. So not to worry too much about that. Um, cool, cool. So now when you click on it, if everything, let me control S, we should go to the next page. See here, next page. Now let's implement the images part of it. Oh, by the way, we are nearing our one hour, 30 minute mark. So just a quick heads up, uh, the, from the intermediate session onwards, the, our sessions are gonna be two hours each. So uh, since these apps need a little more time, so. We might move around a little bit with the time, but our main emphasis will be to give you, uh, to explain as much as we can. So uh, that's a bit of a change here in, in these sessions. Cool. Uh, now let's start to work on our, on our uh, images here. So this, head over to your detail screen. So currently your detail screen is just a container and the padding. So this is the padding part of it, right? Look in the inspector. Oh, sorry, this is your, your second widget here. This is your first widget of high 250. And let me refresh this. Okay, this is getting too complex. So basically you have a column. So vertical arrangement of images and your data here. So very quickly, let's delete our container and you can just copy paste this whole thing. So I will do it very quickly, but I, you know, you can ask me questions. So delete the height of this container and uh, 
Now it should disappear, right? It should be a very small container. Let's give it a child. So this container will actually have a, oh, by the way, yes, before this, uh, in our to-do, yes, to-do four, we actually have to download this carousel slider dependency. So as usual, uh, since this is a quick step, let me paste this carousel slider. As usual, carousel slider. And let's copy this URL here. Alt tab, we'll head back over into our Android Studio. And now below this, paste this here. Uh, and as usual, our semicolon, I mean, our colon and our carry. Now, I know I'm going a little quickly, but uh, like this, let me know, should I slow down, should I go quickly? And uh, yeah, we're trying to do the best we can. So uh, just let me know how I can make the session as good for you. Cool. And then we can feature on the on the YouTube chat, on the stream so I can see it. So that will be perfect. Uh, cool. So so now, um, yeah, pub get. By the way, cancel slider is is a visual aspect. So let's do a cold restart. Oh, some errors here. So let's fix those errors. Uh, right. So let me just read this and. Let's stop this and let's do a cold restart. So if anyone is stuck, any questions, put it on Discord, put it on, on YouTube live chat. Uh, tag me on Discord if you're doing it, and I can help you out. So yes, yeah, send me questions via chat, absolutely. And uh, I will go a little quickly, uh, but I will explain everything as, as best as I can. Um, and all the code, if you are ever lost, not a problem, the code is here. Right? You can just uncomment this out. Uh, cool. So uh, let's let this let this load, um, and this time it will run a little more quicker since we we have run the app already before. So even the cold restart will be quite quick actually. And so as you can see, it, it loaded a little more quicker than before. Uh, uh, Twelve seconds later. Yes. So uh, yes. So as you can see now, we are downloading all the the all the dogs. When you hit two sixty four, then you get all these icons. When you click on any one of these, you come to the, uh, the the detail screen. Now let's start to work on our detail screen. So within this, our child of a container will be carousel slider, and I, I recommend you actually copy paste. So you can because this is something that it's not something to study. It is something to um, like read the documentation and do it. So you don't ever have to memorize something. So I recommend you copy paste it now and don't really stress too much. Like, hey, I can't understand something, not a problem at all. So this, this kind of things, we read the documentation and we do it. So don't stress too much. Cool. Carousel slider takes in a options property called carousel options. And the options property takes in a couple of, so height will give it a height of 250.2. And autoplay, right? Autoplay will give it as true. So basically, when the images, like it'll just keep playing for us, and the images here will keep playing for us. Um, let us um, items. Now this is something complex, and so it's a very good concept. What you're going to do is you're going to do dogs image URLs dot map. I, sorry, uh, not not dot map. As map dot entries uh yeah and this this uh entries dot map yep after that there's a dot map so now when you do a dot map you can access the index uh, uh so here you can access uh in the dot map each uh plus two image url and with it here so let me dot to list. Now this is something go too long. It's Control Alt L. Let me explain. So image URLs dot map. It's something similar to JavaScript, right? Uh, we're just doing the dot as map, so we can even get the index. Now, I don't want you to get scared of this. Like, what's he talking about? It's, it's map. What what are we doing? In Lima stuff, let's just break everything down to as easy as we can, so everyone tries to understand. Um, basically, this is like an iterator. Like a for loop, 
and we, we iterate to all the image URL strings, and then we return um, a widget for each of that image URL. So let's see how we do that. Here we do a, a container, right? We return a container. Now the container, uh, the style of this will be a cache network image. CAC, HED, cache network image. And same properties as before, right? So image URL will be uh, Oh, image will actually will be image URL. Um, so basically, we are this. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it seems confusing for people. Um, but don't worry, with time, like you'll get this. So, so. Ask any questions and we can answer those. Image URL will be image URL. Uh, seems to be an error here. Oh, yep, yep, yep. Sorry, dot, dot value, image URL dot value. And uh, so what is the cache network image takes? Yes, in the placeholder. So to save time, I will just copy the placeholder and the, uh, the error. It's basically the same as last page. So uh, we can save some time here. And uncomment this stuff out. Okay, so and control or L to so, um, so within our container we have a, an image, right? That looks like this. Um, so this looks complex, but don't worry. Now control S. Let's see if, if it. I mean, let's see how it looks like. But right, so we have some images here. Add some images here. Um, let us add a border to these images. So to add a border, this amazing property in container. So within the container, there's a decoration and box decoration. And within box decoration, there's something called border. And within border, there's border dot all. And here color. Uh, so we use let let's use colors dot brown. Right? That's our primary color. Um, so if everything works, you get a brown border here. Now to make these borders curved, right? Curved borders. Um, again, let me do Control Alt L, and let me. So inside the box decoration, there's a property called border radius. Border radius dot circular. Any point now. Control S. Each image now becomes curved. Right? Curved. Um, uh, each image becomes curved. Now let's let's so a couple of things here. Let's add some padding. Like these images are sticking to each other, right? So let's add some space between here. So uh, don't worry if you can't follow along. I mean, I'll uh, like you can. Uh, yeah. So edge insects dot symmetric. So we we're adding some some horizontal padding right here. So edge insects are symmetric uh, horizontal. Let's add padding of 20 point or 5.0 would, would be fine. 10 point actually. Oh, uh, actually, actually not here. Add it to the container itself. So wrap the container with the padding widget and replace this line basically with padding asymmetric. And by the way, you can just copy paste the code if you ever get confused. So not to worry. Control S. And now we should get something like this. Um, now, if you see, sometimes the images, it's very hard to see, but the images are, like you see, it's going out of the container. So to, to, to stop that, um, as you can see here, we, we oh, a couple of things actually align and center are right. Okay. So this cache network image, uh, like if you see the containers, oops. Um, like for a container with a, like you see, for a vertical image, we want all the containers to be of the same size. So to do that, just wrap this uh, cache network image, Alt Enter, with an align. So this is actually how I would recommend you to follow this workshop: is Control S, and now all the, all of them should be the same size. 
even the vertical ones you see the container should be of the same size how i would recommend you to follow this workshop is like um just trying to get a grasp of how we of the thinking of like how how do we you know put our thoughts into the ui and then you can follow along with the code uh, like at your pace uh, i think that's the best way uh, and then always we, we are here to you know ask, answer any of your questions so uh, that'll be good next sometimes you might notice that the images are going out of the out of the border so it's still hard to see but uh, zoom in Oops, I'm messing this up. I uh, it looks like I messed this up. Let's get back over to our app. And what what's going to happen? Let's see. So uh, okay, we're going to restart the app. Cool. So um, yeah. So so now the images they can go out of that that container border. So we're going to wrap it within something called a clip R rect. So um, just understand the clip R rect as the name suggests. It clips something, right? So let's click on any of these. It's surprising. Let's do control S. Uh, it's surprising. So I think when we close the app, something happens. So let's let's give it a restart or restart. And uh, yeah. So any questions in the comments? Cool. So for it, we, we are once we do once we finish. I mean, our, our main thing that's left now is, is the is is working. Yeah. So the image is here. So let's wrap. Uh, yeah, now, now it's working. So observe the images. Oops. Observe the images closely. Sometimes the images could go out of the container. Uh, Okay, wait, let, let's wait for, for a good image to come and then I can show you. Okay, let, let's wait for this to scroll. Um, yeah, notice here, notice here, right? It goes out of the container, so let's fix that. Uh, by wrapping our align, so Alt Enter, wrap this align within a, actually not, an, not align, wrap the cached network image within a clip R effect and give it a border radius. Of border, so basically the same border radius as your. Now, if you notice, oops, uh, so not this, I mean the align, wrap the align within. Uh, so, which image you, which uh, widget you wrap, it, it matters here. So, clip our uh, rect and let's paste the border radius here. Now, all the images they will never go out of this container. You have set a clip. A clip means if it, if it ever overflows, clip it. I don't want to see the, like, we don't want to see the exterior of it, so clip it. Uh, that's it, actually. So there are a couple of small tweaks that, you know, that are here, like um, enable infinite scroll, uh, automatic duration. So, so basically, like, infinite scroll is uh, height autoplay. Actually, we have done everything. So step four is also done. So we're getting very close. So any questions here? I know it's, it's a lot to digest, but uh, don't fight too much. Be always here to help. Any questions on Discord? Cool, looks like, looks like everyone's fine. Yes, so if there are any questions, you can put it in the, in the chat. And uh, if not, let's save the changes and let's move to our final steps. And we're very close to the finish line, folks. So if you are following along, that's very nice. If you aren't, not a problem. If you are just using the comments, right, and using that, I would actually recommend that, right? And that's the best way to learn uh, initially is read the code at your own time. Uh, and okay, completed step four. Save those things, let's head over to step five. 
start a goal. Let's look at the get dependencies so you know we can sync everything. Now let's see what else you have to implement. Yep. Now let's implement this portion of our screen. So um, our first thing is yes, so this is a padding. So let's look at the uh, inspector. So let, let's add some stuff here. So first things first, let's add a column. So the child of our, oops, the child of our padding widget, this is a padding widget, by the way. If you want to see it, click on this and click on, let me refresh this. Notice it's the padding widget, right? You can use this, it's a cool feature. Click on this and click on the, it'll tell you what, it can, it'll even show you, you know, what image is in the hierarchy and so on and so forth. Cool. Now, so now within the padding, the child of the padding will be a column. Why? Why a column? A vertical arrangement. A vertical arrangement of these texts, right? A vertical arrangement. So vertical means column. Uh, cool. So in a, inside of a column. Uh, okay. So yes, inside of a column, let's, let's give it children. No, now it's like a fun part. You can just copy paste this, this stuff here, right? So don't stress too much. So text dog.me, right? To show you the dog's name. I think here, let's style this. So style, uh, text style. And let's give it a font size. I hope you're seeing how easy it is to, to build pixel perfect UIs, right? 30.2 and then font weight. So font weight, we, we covered it in brief. It's the thickness of your, uh, thickness of the text. So here, let's give it a W600. A higher number means more thick. So you get this high thick stuff here. Control out L, so it, let's, let's control L. So it becomes a beautiful hierarchy. Now we have the text. Now, below the text, let's give it some space. So let's add a sized box. So text, let's add a sized box of height 5.0. So, oops, not 50.0, 5.0. Notice here, you get this very small line. It's very faint, so let me 50.0. Notice that you get this line. And below this, let's give it text. So what to save time, I can just copy this text here. Just for the quote now, the dog dot quote. And this will be size 20, if I'm not wrong, because dog name, 18 and W300. So 18 and a little lighter, so W300, control S, right? We want to keep, give a spacing between this of five. If you give a spacing of zero, it sticks and it doesn't look good, right? We need some spacing, so we just give it a, space of five. So look at this hierarchy, a column. You have a text, then you have a sized box, which is a very small space. Then you have the text for the quote. Uh, right, and it, how to follow along, if, you know, it's all commented out. So just uncomment this out and paste it within your column. Right, your second dog quote is also pasted. So just paste that. Very good step. Now let's have a look at our quote. The next is our origin, right, our origin. So let's see how do we implement our origin. So add a size box of, uh, next is add a size box of 20. So below the quote, let's add a const sized box of 20 point of height 20.0. So observe now you get this line of 20.0. Now let's add something cool and unique called a row. So a row is basically like a column, but horizontal. Children of the row will be, now, now this, here comes something cool. We actually are going to use, for all these icons that you see here, these icons, we're going to use a special library for it. So we are nearing the end, so hang in there, folks. Flutter icons. So let's download that library from our Download the library from our pub.dev. Control C, or enter. 
And let us paste that dependency here. And I will also paste it in the chat for all of you folks. So if you want, you can check it out from there. And pub go ahead. Could we not use the padding margin? Uh, very good question. So you are asking wait, in detail screen. Uh, yes, we, we could have. But uh, you know, padding, the, the thing is, for padding, you have to uh, wrap this text within a container for, for that. We have to wrap this within a padding widget. And that, you know, it it uh, it increases the amount of code. It is like to read. Now it's very easy to know, like a hierarchy, like text, then a space of five text, then space of 20. So very good question. Your turntable, uh, we can use padding, but for it's not recommended as such. It, it, you'll notice like how it will help you out in the future. Very good question. So you folks are paying attention. That's, that's very rewarding to know, right? You, you are paying attention. That's, thank you for paying attention. Nice. So now, oh, uh, icons are visible. So let's do a cold restart. And uh, we will take a slightly more time since we want to explain everything in detail. So um, yeah, and also you can ask some questions on Discord. And I'll be checking out some questions from Discord also. So let's give it some more time. And uh, hopefully, this shouldn't take too long since we have restarted the app after running it once. So uh, this cold restart would actually take far less time. And then we can start to work on our origin, on our origin here. So you can see that. So I will implement this quickly. And since it's, you can uncomment this stuff out. So everything is done for you in great detail. So don't worry too much about it. And also the solution code is there. So you, know, you are never left on your own. So it's always some kind of help there for you. Let's wait until it hits 264 and Uh, if, if you have any questions, so you may not follow this to the T, but you, know, you can just ask some questions without actually following the workshop. And we can always answer those questions. So many questions via chat. Cool. So let's take any any dog here, Akita. Let's let's start to work. Let's actually take a dog, like an Afghan hound that has the origin of Afghanistan and you know, something, something like that. Children. So our first children is icon, icons, so flutter icons. So let's see in, in the to do's. I've, I've mentioned the to do's what to uh, MD globe icon. So let's let's do this here. Flutter icon start MD globe icon. Let's import this alt enter import and simply get some errors here. Uh, MD globe icon. Control S. Now you should notice the icon appear here. If everything goes correctly, yep, I can came here. Next, let's add a const size box of width. So let me show you the, in the inspector. So now we are running short time. I, I go slightly quickly and ask the questions. So let's give it 10.0. So you have a slight width. Right here, you have a slight width. And then let's add a text. The text will be uh, dog or origin. Control S. You get this. Let's style this style, text style. And uh, I think we use a font size of 18, if I'm not wrong. Oops, looks like I, I froze there. Yep, so main axis alignment dot center. So everything is mentioned in the code, so you won't have to worry too much. Next, let's work on our on our height and weight. Right? Height and weight. So yeah, in, in our height and weight, so below this row, let's create a sized box. How, how, of how much space. So everything is written in the comments and it's very detailed. Uh, and globe icon text size 18, size box of 20, add a row for height children. Yeah, so let's let's talk about that. Size box, height 18.0. 
I think it was 20 point one. Yeah. Oh, no. Let's add a row. Right. So this is what you need basically. Right. Two, two, one, like everything is horizontal. So row and children. Now let's add some icons. Icon. So basically, I'll just copy paste this. It'll take us some time. Like this. Copy paste this. And uh, now this will be dog dot height. So 18. Then let's do copy this whole thing again. And let's do dog dot weight. Now let's control S. And now you should see you have the height and the weight. Now we can, uh, for height, we can do a dollar sign. Oops. So, yeah, dollar sign. And for height, we can do uh, feet. And for width, we can do and for weight, we can do LBs, spawns. This. Now, just to, to move this and space it evenly, one cool trick is there is wrap these three within a, so Alt Enter, wrap it within a row. Right? You, you have a row within a row, and wrap these three again within a row. Alt Enter, and within a wrap with a row. Control S, and now you notice nothing happens, but one cool trick will happen is when you add a main axis alignment here, that space evenly. So now you have this row, which is this group of these three widgets, and another row, which is the group of these three widgets. Now when you press Control S, it's spaced evenly. So don't, don't get like scared. I mean, this is like stuff which, uh, like we're going a little quickly, but uh, like everything's then in the, in the repo. So if you can check it out and, Ask me and uh, Dalton if there any questions. And others, other tutors also who are helping out. Cool. We have the rows. Let's change the icons here. So I think this is the icons of height. And this one is views. So I've this search here. Uh, sure, let's just use this for now. Uh, the exact icon. Yeah, okay, we'll just use this. So very good. So now we have completed step uh, step step four. Also, sorry, step five. Again, uh, same thing. So I know this is a little hard, and uh, so I mean, yeah. Let, let's just now get scared and ask questions if there are. So git commit. Let's for, so for the for the commit. Oh yes, completed step. Anything will be fine. So. Okay, I'll have a check at Discord. Any questions here? All right, no questions here. On on YouTube, if Twelve seconds later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so so yes. So it's like so again. Cool. So now we are nearing the end. Step six, and that's the final one. We'll extend the session slightly more, um, so we can get this done. And step six, start a code. So I'll quickly go over there, and that will just be relatively straightforward. So let's get the dependencies, and uh, all the dependencies are correct. And this is very quick. So uh, now if you, let's implement the remaining part of our UI. So let me quickly show you uh, these four things, right? So the temperament, the age, I mean, the lifespan, and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to blindly follow the the Use. So let's give it a height of 40.0. Right, 40.0. And you'll observe this line will come here uh, next. Let us, uh, so I'll quickly create this row here. So we have this row, children, after row, oops, children. So, right, it's a horizontal. You have an icon. So you have an icon. Uh, I can set, I'm reading from the top. So I can emoji. Outline icons emoji outlined with S, and then there's a const size. Yeah, we are nearing the mark there. Uh, width 
of 10.0. And finally, our actually, we, we, so we'll do text. And text will be so dog dot temperament. Now to save time, uh, I mean there's some some checks like null checks, temperament. Right, I won't do any null checks, right? Uh, okay, I'll just do one null check. And so, if by the way, this I mentioned on Discord, but uh, basically this is the same as if this is null, then the double question mark is a null safe operator. If this is null, then um, the text should display dash. And control S. Let's quickly style it. Style very style. Uh, font size. 20, 18 point less. You'll notice that it might go out of the screen. So to have it stop you know, within the screen, click on text, Alt Enter, and click on wrap with widget, and wrap it within an expanded. Control less. I notice it will stay within the screen. Control Alt L. Now, what's an expanded? Notice your icon, then sized box, icon size box. Expanded says take all the space available. Expand, like fill all the space that you have. So, uh, more on that, you know, in the future, UIs will talk more about that. Um, expanded. Now, what we're going to do is actually going to copy paste this through and then it'll be done. So, yeah, so we'll add a size box there, sure. All you have to do is not change. Ooh, I think we're using flutter icons. Now so we have done the temperament. Now let's work on the lifespan. So we are very close. Flutter icons and let's time lapse. Right, and then expand it. No, not temperament, let's do. Let's do a uh, lifespan, dog dot lifespan. It is an error here since we forgot to put a comma up top. And let me const size box of height 9.0 and a comma here too. And so now if I press control S, if everything goes right, you get a lifespan. You notice this size box is a 20.0 size box, size, size box here. Sized box, size of 20.0, comma. You notice this line here. Oops, some error. Put a comma here, top. Get this line here, size box. Then under the row, we paste the row that we have. And so I'm just going to copy this. I can, yeah, good question. Curiosity question for what are your thoughts on how to update to Android Studio? I'm excited to, about the integrated I mean, to, or, or update to. Ah, uh, so yes, I've noticed that this update to 4.1. I did not download that update, but I've noticed. So um, I'm actually excited. Uh, usually they come up with some good features. So uh, yeah, but I haven't checked out the update. But very good question, Dalton. Yeah, so you are, uh, you've heard of the updates. So that's, that's very nice. Uh, Flutter icons. Clipboard, so okay, control S. Yeah, we got the clipboard. And now for the temperament, we won't display temperament, we'll display uh, red for right, different fields of the dog. So control S, put in hunting. And last, so we are named the end of, the, of our app, font size box. I'm basically just copy pasting most of it. So it's the same thing basically. I'm just changing which icon I'm using, right? All of these are the same, but which icon I'm using changes and what the text is changes. So, Height 20.0. Uh, and let, let's paste our row here. Oops. Paste our row. And what icon I'm going to what icon we're going to use here is dog MCO. I'll just copy that here. Let's be flutter icons. So uh, a, qu a quick thing is icons is basically the, the icons that are part of the box. Now, if you say Flutter icons, uh, that is basically the the package that we downloaded, right? So, um, and not temperament. Now you have breed group. Cool. So control S, and that's it. So we have completed UI of our app, and so I think we, uh, yeah. So that's so app UI, our pictures and 
our dog quotes up, but each dog has a has a quote. Uh, yeah, and you get the dash if ever it's not. So yeah, so th that's our app. And this one thing is, you know, the image here and the image here is the same. So what if we can animate those images? That's something that we'll use almost all the time. So let me save the changes here. So git add dot git commit dash m and let's just call it completed step six. Completed step six. And now for a final step, we'll do that animation stuff that I was talking about. So step six, now let's do step seven. And that's just very quick. Uh, there's nothing much to do there, so check out. And we only have four to do. So let's basically go to our dog card, right? Our dog card, this each dog card has an image. So let's do this, wrap it with something called a hero. Now a hero, we'll see you know what it is. And hero takes something called a tag. A tag is like a text, a unique text. So for tags, let's just give it a text of dog. Let me do this. Dog dot name. Each dog, I'm assuming, has a unique name. Um, and then I'm just going to give underscore zero. Since it's a zero width image, right? Each dog card shows only the zero width image, the first image, the zero width index image, or the first image. So our tag, our unique tag, will be the unique dog name. Now, within the dog name, there could be many images. So to uniquely identify that particular image, that particular cache network image, we do this underscore zero, right? Our first step is done. Now, within our detail screen, right, there are multiple images here. So let me show you. So when you see this cached network image, click on it, Alt Enter, oops, Alt Enter, and wrap this within a hero widget. And now for tag, it has to match. So you'll have to give underscore, I mean, uh, dog sign, dog dot name, uh, and undersc underscore. And now, since there are multiple images here, right, you can do underscore. So, not in the what do we call it? Uh, entry, sorry, entry. So, what is this entry? So, like you can read read the code, but I just want to show you what this hero does. Now, when you click the back button, observe. See something cool, right? This is so easy to implement by just wrapping your your common widgets with a hero widget. So let's slow this so you can see the the. Right? It's a very beautiful animation. So uh, how do we implement it? Uh, very simple. Uh, we have to wrap our common widgets within a hero widget and give it a unique tag. So flat is extremely easy. So you, like now it, it might look complex, but it's like ask us questions so we can help you out. So just put a unique tag on both those, on both those uh, common widgets and you get this beautiful animation, right? So that's our app. So uh, let's see if there are any, any questions here. I know this was a lot. This is our first intermediate workshop. And in the Android one, we only focus on very easy stuff. But we, we, the reason we wanted to go into intermediate and advanced in this series is Flutter is so easy to learn. So like we have, I mean, it, it's, it's not the best. Like we are trying our best to, to, um, to help out. So make most use of, of this. I mean, it's not going to be straightforward, but uh, ask us questions. and. Try your best, you know, to to uh, get something out of these workshops. So, uh, like, I'm confident if people follow you know, all these steps properly and uh, you know try to use these these workshops as a way to just get a feel for it, and then you know try try doing it by themselves and uh, uh, actually put some time into it, you'll you'll actually get to learn quite a lot. Like this this series, I'm confident with it is it's uh, discovering many good topics here. So, uh, ask us questions. We are always here to help. But uh, yeah, so this is our app, our dog quotes app. And uh, yeah, that, that's our app.
Let me unmute. Uh, okay, so yeah, no more questions coming in. No more questions coming in. Dalton, thank you so much for taking care of the um, uh, Discord feed. And I know that he was like yeah. supporting and running a few uh, one on ones uh, live as well. Uh, I'm not going to keep you all hold uh, any any longer. I know it's 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 been a long session. Um, and um, what about office hours, Rohan? Did you guys make make an announcement there, or are you, you're welcome to ping me, and we can share that on Discord. Anybody in Discord can jump in. Then we were thinking about tomorrow. Is that correct? Yes, uh, tomorrow from uh, six to eight uh, Eastern uh, time. Eastern Standard Time, six to eight um, in the evening. Yes. And okay, so what I'll do is I'll make an announcement on there as well, that way everybody's aware, um, and then we can go from there. Absolutely. And uh, yes, so uh, uh, yes, so uh, ask us if there are any questions, and we'll be happy to help attend those officers. We'll be happy to help. Awesome. Okay, so before I go, everyone, uh, make sure to tune in this weekend. We're running a Cloud Study Jam uh, session as well. I'm just going to play that clip um, with the link so you can RSVP. Um, I know it's going to be a long session too, but this one is going to be building upon what we did two weeks ago. So hopefully I will see you all there. That being said, I bid you all good night and uh, see you next week. See you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Get ready for a cloud-first workplace. Jumpstart your career by signing up for a Google Cloud hands-on learning experience. Companies around the world are moving to the cloud. This is a unique opportunity to gain new skills and professional credentials. If you want to discover a career, scale your startup, or perform groundbreaking research that will change the world, this is the event for you.